Now we're going to talk about when a function undergoes transformations of horizontal stretches and compressions and reflections in the y-axis. And the letter that determines those transformations is this k value in the transform function. So as we did in the previous video on vertical stretches and compressions, we're going to go over different cases for which the value of k can take. And we're going to give a description for each case and an example. So dealing with our first case, when k is greater than 1, what that means is that the function undergoes a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over k. And this is where the k value is a little unique in terms of how we express it. If you remember to the previous video, when we dealt with the vertical stretch and compressions, uh, we dealt with the a value and we would say that it's by a factor of a. However, with k, we always have to take the reciprocal, so it's by a factor of 1 over k. So for example, if we take a parent function, uh, square root of x, and then transform it into y is equal to the square root of 3x, this 3 here represents the k value. And the way we would describe this transformation is that it would be a horizontal compression, so I'm just going to put uh, hc representing horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 3, right? Because we take the reciprocal of the k value. The k value is 3, so we would say it's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 3. And then graphically, the way it would look is we have our base parent function, the square root of x in red here. And then if we take it and horizontally compress it, we would get this square root of 3x. And you could actually make a table of values if you want and graph both of these on the same graph and you would get uh, that result. Moving on to the next few cases, if k is equal to 1, there is no transformation. Now, if k is between 0 and 1, then it undergoes a horizontal stretch, again, by a factor of 1 over k, the reciprocal. So for example, if we have uh, the square root of x, our parent function, and we transformed it to y is equal to one, uh, the square root of 1 over 3x, the k value is 1 over 3, and it's between 0 and 1. So we would say that this function undergoes a horizontal stretch, so hs, by a factor of 1 over k, or 1 over 1 over 3. So the reciprocal of one-third is three. So we'd say it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of three. Okay, so one more time. The k value was one over three. So we know that uh, we're dealing with this case. The k value is between zero and one. So it undergoes a horizontal stretch by a factor of one over k. So it's one over, the k value is one over three. And the reciprocal of 1 over 3 is just 3. So we'd say it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3. And showing this graphically, so the red function represents our base parent function, the square root of x. And if we take that function and horizontally stretch it, right, we horizontally stretch it, we would get this resulting function here, which is our square root of 1 over 3 x. So again, if you took a table of values, graph both of them, plotted the points on the same graph, you would get that result. Next case, if k is equal to 0, well, as we discussed, when a is equal to 0, there's no function. So if this was 0 here, then the whole function would just be y is equal to 0. No transformations are going on, and there is no function to deal with. Now for the next few cases, I erased the previous cases because I was running out of room on the board, but just continue writing these cases to the bottom of the previous ones. So the next case is if k is between negative 1 and 0. And if it's between negative 1 and 0, it undergoes a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of k, and it's also reflected in the y-axis because it's negative. So for example, if we take y is equal to the square root of x and transform it to the square root of negative 1 over 3x, 
notice how the, neg the k value is negative 1 over 3, so it's between negative 1 and 0. So we would say that this function has a horizontal stretch by a factor of 1 over k, or 1 over the absolute value of k, which is 1 over 3. And 1 over 1 over 3 is just 3. So it's a horizontal stretch by a factor of 3, and it's also reflected in the y-axis. So if we had our base parent function, the square root of x, shown here in red, first we would take it and horizontally stretch it, so it would become something like this, as we've shown in the previous case, and then we would reflect it in the y-axis, so it would be going this way. So this function here represents the square root of negative, uh, let me write this a little nicer, negative 1 over 3x, which is this uh, example that we did here. Moving on to our next case, it's very simple. If k is equal to negative 1, all that means is that it just go, undergoes a reflection in the y-axis. It doesn't undergo a horizontal stretch or compression. So if k is equal to negative 1, then the only case, the only example with the uh, parent function being the square root of x, the transform function would be the square root of negative x. And the way the square root of negative x looks like is that it's the same as the original function in red here, the square root of x, but it's just reflected in the y-axis. So there's no horizontal stretch or compression. And for our final case, when k is less than negative 1, we say that the function undergoes a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of k, and because the k value is still negative, it gets reflected in the y-axis. So for example, if we took our parent function the square root of x and transformed it to the square root of negative 3x, our k value is negative 3, so it's less than negative 1, so we know it would undergo these cases. So there would be a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over the absolute value of k. And the absolute value of k, since k is negative 3, the absolute value of that is positive 3. So we would say there's a, horizontal uh, there's a horizontal compression by a factor of 1 over 3. And since the k value is negative, it's also reflected in the y-axis. So one thing I want you to notice is when the k value is negative, there's always a reflection in the y-axis, and when we talk about the factor of how it's horizontally stretched or compressed, the factor is always positive because it's always going to be dealing with the absolute value of k. So here, the k value is negative 1 over 3, but the factor, it was horizontally stretched by a factor of positive 3 horizontally compressed by a factor of positive 1 over 3. So the factors are always positive when you talk about them. Now, showing this graphically, the red represents the base parent function, the square root of x. So if we transformed it by compressing it and then reflecting it, compressing it, we would get a function that looks something like this and then reflecting it in the y-axis, we would end up getting this here. So this function represents y is equal to the square root of negative 3x.